Hello, I'm Georgia Churchill, the storyteller, with old tales for you. Today is a German story called The Seven Swans. But before I begin, I must tell you about nettles, N-E-T-T-L-E-S. They're little green plants. They have delicate little stems and little scalloped leaves. They look so pretty. But on their stems and underneath their leaves are these tiny, almost invisible hairs. And if you touch them, ow, 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 it stings, it stings. And it can last for up to three days, in my experience. It doesn't make you sick. It just stings like a bee sting, sort of. There are a lot of nettles in this story. <laughs> Once upon a time, a long time ago, there was a king his queen, and their eight children, seven boys, one girl. They were a happy family. But then, dagnabbit the way it happened sometimes in real life and in stories, the queen got sick and died. Well, the king and his children loved each other, and they comforted each other through their sorrow. But in the kingdom, there was a wicked witch who had a beautiful but equally wicked daughter. And those two women decided to put an enchantment on the king so that he would be forced to fall in love or at least be forced to marry the beautiful wicked daughter and then those two women could have power within the kingdom. And so they started their work. The king knew that someone was trying to put an enchantment on him. Some days it was stronger than others. One day, when it wasn't very strong, he went into the forest to visit an old crone, C-R-O-N-E, an old wise woman, to ask her what he should do because he was worried about his children. The old crone understood. Yes, well, take this ball of yarn to the edge of the forest and drop it. It will roll along around trees and bushes. You follow it with your children. Tell them what's going on. And it will take you to a small castle that is just the right size for eight children. There will be someone there to cook, someone to do the laundry, and another person to help the children keep the castle clean. And then when you come back, wind up the yarn. Uh, you may go visit them whenever the enchantment is not on you. But hide the yarn. Don't let anyone find it. The king did just as the old crone said. He told his children, oh, they were relieved. They didn't want that beautiful, wicked woman for his stepmother. Mm. And one day, when the enchantment wasn't on him strongly, they went to the edge of the forest, dropped the yarn, followed around bushes and trees, came to a lovely little castle, just the right size for eight children. And the king was able to visit his children a few times before the enchantment came down so strongly on him that he could no longer resist. And he, in fact, married that beautiful, wicked witch's daughter. And after she was queen, oh, wasn't she fine? She went drifting around the palace one day to see what was good and what wasn't good. When she overheard some servants, they were doing their work, but they were talking while they were working. One of them said, remember those seven boys, those tricks they used to pull on us? Oh, they used to make me laugh. And the beautiful wicked queen thought, seven boys? My husband is keeping secrets from me. She went snooping around in his room, and she found the ball of yarn. And she had enough magic to know what it was for. So she took it to the edge of the forest, dropped it, followed it as it went around trees and bushes until she came out to the little castle. Now that morning, the eight children had gone upstairs in the castle to look out the windows, and they saw someone coming. The boy said, oh, father's come to see us. And the sister said, no, no, that person isn't moving the way father does. But it was too late. The boys had already gone tearing down the stairs, running out to meet their, well, it wasn't their father, was it? 
there was that beautiful wicked witch and when she saw the seven boys she <laughs> placed an enchantment on them turning them into seven great white swans they rose in the air and flew off and from the windows of the small castle their sister saw it all happen oh, oh, oh. she had to wait until the beautiful wicked uh, witch's daughter got out of there but then she went tearing down the stairs and took off after her brothers in the direction they'd flown anyway, looking and looking for swans. She looked for so long. At last she came to an old abandoned house in the forest. Ah, oh, she was tired. She went into the house. Ugh, oh, it was all stuffy and terrible. She opened up the windows as wide as she could and whoosh, in flew seven great big white swans who landed on the floor and turned into her brothers. She said, oh, I found you, I found you. I've been looking and looking. Come on, let's go back home. We can't, they said. We can only be ourselves for 15 minutes a day. And then we have to be swans all the rest of the time. Oh, no. Oh, is there anything I can do to help? Yes, but but we can't ask you because it's too hard. Ask me, ask me, she said. Well, you have to go for seven years without talking. And then, during those seven years, you have to knit a seven sweaters out of nettles. Uh, it's too hard. We can't ask you to do that. And she just went. And then they turned back into swans and went flying away. Well, she went right out looking for those bleached white rib bones from deer or something. And with her knife, people always carry little knives at their waist back 300, 400 years ago. With her little knife, she whittled those bones into knitting needles. Then she picked long grasses and made two bags to hang on either side of her belt. One bag to hold the sweater she was working on, or in time, the completed sweaters, and the other bag to hold the nettles that she gathered to use for knitting. And she knitted. Uh, sometimes she'd set little snares for catch rabbits or, or little wild chickeny type birds and she'd cook up a stew so that when her brothers came they could eat a meal with her and they'd talk and tell her all the news but she never said a word. Well, the years went by. Maybe she had finished four sweaters in her bag and she had just begun the fifth. There was a tree in the forest that was very comfortable to sit in, so she sat there a lot while she knitted. And one day, a young king came riding through the forest on his horse. Now, four years had gone by. She was no longer a little girl. She was turning into a very attractive young woman. And the king walked, rode up to her and he said, Well, you're lovely. Would you come take a ride on my horse with me? Now, she didn't know whether she could nod her head or shake it. For, she didn't know what the magic rules were, if that would be considered talking. So she just kept knitting and kind of looked at him. And he looked at her a little and then he said, You know, I won't ask you to talk. And you can keep on knitting as much as you like. But if you come to my castle with me, uh, you can have a good, soft, clean bed to sleep in. I can get you some new clothes, and there's laundry there, and uh, food will be cooked for you several times a day. All you have to do is just knit, and I'll never ask you to talk. And boy, did that ever sound better than what she was doing. So she slid off the tree and climbed up on the horse and went to his castle with him. And the young king was true to his word. He never asked her to talk. He gave her some lotions for her poor, stung, stinging hands that helped a little. And, uh, well, he'd let her go off to gather nettles whenever she needed to. And he'd often sit in the room with her as she knit. Sometimes he'd read. Sometimes he'd read to her. 
It was very nice. They were happy together. But the young king's mother, now he was a young king because his father had died, but his mother, the old queen, she was still living. And she just hated that girl. Oh, she said, what have you brought her home for? She's crazy, I tell you. She never talks. She gathers nettles. She nets nettles. Get rid of her. And the young king said, well, no, mother, I, I'm very fond of her. I, I think I'm falling in love with her. I might marry her. Oh, no! Well, the young king did marry her, much to his mother's disgust. Uh, and in another year's time, there was a baby born. Oh, it was the sweetest little baby. They just loved it. But you know, the young queen, the young queen now, the girl we're talking about, she couldn't take care of her baby because... Well, six years had gone by. She had six sweaters completed. She was well into the seventh sweater. And, well, after all this time and all this being quiet and knitting nettle sweaters, she wasn't about to give up. So the young king hired a lovely woman to take care of the baby. But the old queen... Oh, she just couldn't stand it. She doesn't even take care of her own child. I tell you, she's crazy. I can't stand her. She started going around the kingdom talking about her daughter-in-law. Oh, my poor son, he's married a witch. I, I think she's a witch. I mean, she never talks. She doesn't even take care of her child. And the more the old queen started talking about how her son had married a witch, the better she liked the idea, and she started going around talking more and more about, he married a witch, he married a witch, a witch, a witch, until people started talking, oh dear, our young king has married a witch. I mean, his mother says so. Oh dear, oh dear. And the counselors have come up and talked to him, oh, your majesty, we hear that. And the young king said, no, no, she's not a witch, she's lovely. But one day, the old queen went to the hunter, the royal hunter, and asked him to bring her a jug of blood. That night, she gave the lovely woman who took care of the child some herbs to make her sleep soundly. And in the middle of the night, she took the jug of blood in one hand, picked the baby up out of its cradle in the other, and she splashed blood everywhere and left. She took the baby two miles away, which was a long way back then in the days when you got around on feet and horseback. She took the baby to a farm two miles away to a farmer and his wife. Take care of the child. Take good care of it. I'll pay you money every month. And uh, don't tell anyone where you got the child. Well, then she went into her son. I told you your wife is a witch. She's, she's killed her own child. If you don't believe it, come look. Oh, and he saw the blood splashed around and the child gone and, and everyone was talking to him. Your wife's a witch. She should be burned at the stake. Oh, no. Burned at the stake. Do I need to explain that to you? A stake was a great big pole. And then they'd make a pile of wood around the bottom. And if someone was so terrible, they would tie them to the stake and light the pile of wood and burn them. That's what they used to do back 300, 400 years ago. We still, um, human beings still do terrible things to other humans. I, I'm so sorry about that. But, but humans have a good side, too, where we're noble and brave. Anyway... They were saying, our, our queen, should be, oh, she's a witch. She should be burned at the stake. And uh, the counselors were saying, your majesty, uh, you, you need to, oh, oh, oh. He didn't, he went to his wife. He knelt down in front of her and he said, please, my darling, dear, I have never asked you for anything. I've never asked you to speak. I've let you do all the knitting you want to, but please, just this one time, tell me that you didn't kill our child. Well, what was she to do? It was almost the end of the seven years. 
The last sweater was almost finished. She just had one sleeve to go. I... All this time, her brothers were almost free of their enchantment. She couldn't talk now. So she just kept knitting and looking at her husband's eyes and trying to tell him with her eyes that... But he was so distraught. And finally he said, yes, all right then, burn her at the stake. So a pole was set up and a big pile of wood was arranged around it and they took the young queen out and walked her up the pile of wood and they let her keep her sack of uh, nettle sweaters that were completed, six. Uh, They let her keep the other sack with nettles in them because she was still knitting like crazy. She just had one sleeve left to finish. They didn't tie her arms back. They let her keep her arms out. They just tied a rope around her waist And the smoke came up. Uh, she was coughing and choking. And she, she could hardly see what she was doing. And then up in the air, seven great huge swans flew in a circle above her head. And one by one, the swans swooped down in front of her. When the first swan swooped down, she took the first nettle sweater and threw it over his head, and he went over there. And then the second swan swooped down and threw the nettle sweater over his head, and she did that for all seven swans. And when they landed, they turned into young men, because, of course, her brothers had grown into young men at this time. And they immediately started hollering, Put out the fire! That's our sister! She's broken our enchantment at great cost to herself. And, oh, the young king was more than happy to pour water on the fire. He ran up the pile of wood and his wife threw her arms around his neck and she said, I can talk now and I didn't kill our baby. I didn't. Well, a little investigation showed where the blood had come from, and uh, they went to the farm and picked up their baby, who was fat and happy and healthy, and, and but the young king was so angry with his mother. He didn't know what to do. I couldn't kill her. She was his mother. So he had a comfortable bed put down in a dungeon, and he sent her to the dungeon to live the rest of her days. But, you know, while the Swan Brothers had been flying around, learning all the news, they found out that the old, beautiful, wicked witch's daughter had gotten terribly ill and had died. Their father was no longer under an enchantment. So they all went back to that little kingdom to visit the old man. And, oh, what a wonderful family reunion they had except for the youngest brother, whose one arm was still a wing because the sleeve never got finished on that sweater. But the father took them to the crone in the forest and she rubbed his arm and the herbs and things until all the feathers fell out. And there was a perfectly good arm underneath it. And that's why they all lived happily ever after. Thank you for listening to the story. Bye.